<laughs> she collapsed. God killer, slay her your better. Oh, I love that. What is up, everybody? This is Joshua Alvis of Alvis Gaming Phelps. Welcome back to another episode of Slay the Princess. Okay, we're back again with this. Uh, this is our fourth playthrough, I'm pretty sure. Rather than keep talking about it, let's just get right into it. Uh, before we were, uh, we did the uh, the rescuing her. Then we did the 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 razor, and then we did the uh, the the confusing one. Uh, so now. Now let's figure out what we're gonna do this time. You may just get right into it. Part of warning, yeah. Yeah. Which will yep. Lie. Yep. We're not We've heard all this, this before. Right? We've heard it. all this before. If you haven't seen it, go watch the other videos. If you're wondering what's going on, go watch the beginning of the series. The and interior you'll find of the cabin is almost on. entirely bare. The air is stale. The blade is your implement. All right. So this time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. To the basement. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated the by same an still. unseen. Her voice carries up the stairs. All right, let's see what she sounds like. Who's there? All right, she's, she's sounding a little threatening. She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Alright, so, gotta remember that taking the blade changes the tone, so... Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Alright, here we go. Uh, hey, I think I'm here to kill you? <laughs> oh, are you now? Why don't you come down and let me take a look at you? Great job. You gave away the element of surprise. Good luck, hero. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far it's wall. Still the same. Base. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really still a threat? The Focus on the task at hand. Still the same. All right, so that's you all. You were kidding when you said you were here to kill me. Let's try this one. Uh, I haven't decided yet. How about you drop the knife, and the two of us just... talk? Look how reasonable she's being. We should just drop the blade and talk things out. Don't you dare. Let's see how this one goes. It's fine. We can decide what we want to do after we talk to her. Maybe she really is a monster. Killing someone in cold blood isn't very becoming of us. Like a little bit, so you hear me a little better? All right, so for this one, I'm going to tighten my grip. You ignore the trembling in your hands and tighten your grip on the blade. You poor thing. Your hands are shaking. Are you scared of me? Because you should be. You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. What if she isn't bl bluffing? Why did I stutter? What if she isn't bluffing? What if she kills us? You go into this expecting to die. You're going to die. 
hesitating. Why don't you drop the knife and the two of us can be civilized with each other? I'm not dropping the blade. Then I'm not talking to you. Fine then, I guess we're at an impasse. I guess we are. For the love of everything, just slay her already. Or drop the blade. Do something. Are you sure you don't want to talk? Yeah, I'm sure. For goodness sake, the two of you can't just stand around like this forever. Eventually, something is going to give, and I highly recommend that you be the one to take the initiative here. Because last time when I tried to do this one, she turned into the razor. So this time, I'm going to just drop it. Fine. The blade tumbles out of your trembling hands and drops to the floor with an unceremonious clang. Thank you. Maybe now we can just... talk. Against your better judgment, you step forward to speak with the princess face to face. Unarmed. See how this goes. We'll be fine. I don't know what you're hoping to accomplish here, but I can assure you there's no reasoning with her. <sighs> just make sure you don't forget about the blade on the floor. You're going to need it. So here we are. What an awkward start to a relationship. A relationship? Are you coming on to me? Don't jump to any weird conclusions. We're two people who have met each other. By definition, we have a relationship. Okay, that's fair. Do you know why I'm here to kill you? Do you? You're appar you're apparently going to end the world. Don't just tell her that. That's cute. Do you believe that? Do you think I'm some sort of... <laughs> monster? If I'm supposed to be capable of ending the world, then how did I wind up here, chained to a wall? Have they told you why I'm allegedly so... dangerous? No, but I'm sure they have their reasons for keeping that information secret from me. Thanks for the vote of confidence. What if they're bad reasons, though? If they had good reasons for thinking I was dangerous, wouldn't they have shared them with you? I don't want to hurt anyone. I just want to leave. At the end of the day, whatever the two of us have going on down here is about trust. Whoever sent you to slay me claimed I was a threat to the world, but they didn't tell you why. That doesn't sound right to me. And I don't think it sounds right to you, either. Otherwise, we'd be killing each other instead of talking. She has a point. There's a reason I've been telling you to question the situation, and there's a reason you've listened. So, I could tell you that I'd lead a quiet life in the woods, or that I'd open an orphanage, or that I'd do any other number of good things that I'm sure you think you want to hear. But you don't really know me, do you? What can my word possibly be worth in a situation like this? Exactly. She's right about one thing. Her word isn't worth anything. Like I said, it's all about trust. Blind trust. So do you trust me, the prisoner, the victim, the princess clearly incapable of ending the world? Or do you trust whoever put me here? She's wrong. This isn't about trust. This is about risk. We stand to lose everything, all for the sake of one person, and a subjugating monarch, no less.
How long have you been down here? Too long. Again, she offers no specifics. No matter how hard you try, you'll never get a straight answer out of her. I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna see, like, remember how last time when I, I set her free, I could backstab her. I'm gonna try that. How would I get you out of here? You can't. Don't bother. I'm guessing you don't have the key then. I'm sure there's a key somewhere around here, and if there isn't... Well, we can always put that knife to good use. Her sharp eyes settle on the edge of the blade. She isn't suggesting what I think she's suggesting, right? She is. I'm sure of it. Okay, we've talked enough. Oh, have you decided what to do with me? You know why you're here. Alright, so I'm gonna get her out, and then I'm going to stab her in the back. Oh, you have to be kidding me. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. If you don't have the key, maybe you should go looking for it. I'm sure it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light. That's the same. Go check. I'll be here. You Check. attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the door locks. Insists. Check the bottom. You make your way back to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been easier for whom? Yeah, easier. Easier for everyone. Same thing, that's the same thing. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? Yes. The knife. Pick it up and cut me out of here. You won't like what happens if you do that. Against your better judgment, you place the blade against the princess as you cut into her flesh. Okay, yeah, that's the same. The blade is sharp, and you make quick work of it. Before long, you're able to crack through bone, and she pulls the bleeding stub of her arm through the iron gauntlet. She didn't so much as utter a sound. Free from her bindings, the princess turns to face you, her fierce gaze meeting your eye. How is she so composed after losing an arm? It's like she isn't even bothered by it. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. No, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You That's can't just same. let her escape. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. All right, so here we go. Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. All right, and boop. You bring the blade down and plunge it into the princess's back. Finally. Okay. There's no going back now. Though the blade left a deep gash in her shoulder, she barely so much as flinches, turning around to stare at you incredulously. Are you serious? Oh shit, here we go. I don't know what came over you, but if we're doing this, I guess I'll have to kill you. Do you think I need both of my arms to do that? I can beat you to death with one. Oh boy, here we go. But I don't have to tell you that. And I'll go ahead and show you. Try again. Thank you. You swing your arm towards her throat, the blade singing through the air. But she's ready for it. She grabs your arm, her grip like a stone vice. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> you drop the blade. Oh, God! <laughs> She lets go, and faster than you can react, rears back and hits you with a bone-shattering haymaker. There's a ringing in your ears. Your the fuck? She just turned into Supergirl? Bone against bone where she fractured your jaw, but your body isn't allowing you to feel much right now. Adrenaline coursing through your system and numbing your nerves. Oh boy. Here we go. You fall to your knees. You're barely able to bring your trembling arms up to defend yourself before she hits you again. 
Every blow is as punishing as the first. You feel bones shatter with every impact, unknown ruptures blossoming with blood somewhere inside of you. Oh, she's just beating the shit out of me. Bang. I'll go ahead and put you out of your misery. Yes, please do so we can move this along. She places a confident heel on your chest and pushes you down to the ground. Her knee falls to your throat, your windpipe crushed beneath a weight you didn't think her slight form could possibly possess. It can't just end like this, right? I'm sorry, but it's over. Everything goes dark, and you die. All right, here we go. Let's see what we get. Chapter two, the tower? Oh boy. You're on a path. You're here. To yep, 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 yep. Uh, it's happened yeah. already. Yep. If he doesn't remember yeah. what happened, then you that know, I know can what hear happened. you, right? It's going to be a lot harder than you think to keep seeing. What does it matter what he knows? Oh. There's nothing we can do to stop her. She's just going to kill us again. a new again. voice. All right, here we go. She is not going to kill you unless you let her. But slaying the princess and saving the world is going to be much more difficult than it has to be if you spend the whole time second-guessing yourself. Looking around the the trees and stuff real quick, it doesn't look like much has changed. The music definitely did, though. A warning before you go any further. Warning. She will lie. Yep. We might as well just pledge ourselves to her and stop pretending we're capable of doing anything. Oh, uh, we this turned situation. off submissive she probably now. Doesn't even need to try oh, boy. to overpower us. Can we tone down the pessimism just a smidge? <laughs> I'm not being a pessimist. I'm just being realistic. You're being annoying. <laughs> just ignore their bickering and whatever you do, don't pledge yourself to her. I cannot stress enough how absolutely catastrophic that would be for everyone, yourself included. I agree. If she's wrongfully imprisoned, then we should rescue her, but if he's telling the truth, we shouldn't just hand her the world on a silver platter. Rescue her? Given the stakes of the situation, there isn't really a difference between rescuing her and pledging yourself to her. Ugh. Either would be terrible. So please, try to ignore mm. both of those knuckleheads and focus on saving the world. Let's not make this harder than it has to be. If that's right, what you go. want, I guess I don't have a say here. Shut the fuck up, let's continue, let's see what happens. This story is getting even more interesting every the time I go. The cabin oh. is larger and more grandiose than its humble exterior would suggest. The only furniture of note is a massive marble altar with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Back. Why do we feel so small? Oh boy, this is like she's more dominant. We don't feel small. We are small. You take the blade from the altar. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Is this going to be like some evil queen kind of stuff? That's what I'm assuming. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a spiral staircase. It steps almost as deep as you are tall. The smell of incense drifts up from below. For a moment, you almost feel at ease. Huh. This is actually kind of nice. It's still a stone basement. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her booming voice rolls up the stairs. Oh boy. Is that a guest I hear? Don't linger on the stairs. Come down and witness me. Yep. Evil queen you bullshit. Oh boy. Was booming. She wasn't like this last time. We need to get down there. She wants us to see her. We need to see her. And like, yeah, so now I've turned into a submissive simp. <laughs> Should we be worried about your sudden change in attitude? Just a few minutes ago, you were going on about how pointless everything was. Now you want to go down there. It doesn't matter what that little voice says. He's not the one making the decisions. Though if his ramblings get you to the princess, they get you to the princess. Here we go. 
Making your way down the spiral staircase is a time-consuming and exhausting effort, every step requiring you to clamber over one edge before dropping to the next. But soon the end comes into view, and you tumble to the bottom, entering the vast, temple-like room beyond. The princess towers over you, almost glowing in the weak starlight, her figure framed by a stained glass window. Her long hair billows around her, and a chain binds her wrist to the far wall. The chain is nothing to her. It might as well be a toy for all the good it would do. I told you it was pointless to resist her. Evil queen, more like evil goddess, never mind. The little bird has returned to me. I wonder what he wants. You brought that knife again, even though you know it's useless. Such charming audacity. Drop it. As if on command, the blade slips from your grasp. <laughs> it <laughs> didn't matter what I picked, okay. Floor. But we didn't drop it. We decided to grip it tighter, remember? Are you really just going to let that happen to us? I have a duty to report facts as facts, and the fact is that you dropped the blade. Of course we dropped it. She's so much more than us. You wouldn't understand what it feels like to be in her presence. Oh, I understand what's going on, and you'd better snap yourself out of it. Neil. No. Oh, are you still trying to defy me? I said, Neil. Your legs buckle, and your <laughs> knees hit the floor. <laughs> Oh god! Oh shit! That's my good little bird. Now, why don't we talk? The last time we met you told me I was destined to end the world. That thought wrapped itself around my heart. It has pulled at me since the moment I squeezed the life out of your broken lungs. I could feel its fundamental truth awaken me. The collapse of the old is a necessary prelude to the birth of the new. And the world as it is now is overdue for... alterations. <laughs> yeah, this is like some evil goddess bullshit. It's time for me to seize my destiny. And you, little bird, will help me seize it. Well, that gives away the game, doesn't it? It certainly does. And beyond that, it more than lends credence to our conversation in the woods. I don't love the thought that in some other reality you failed to destroy her, but what's done is done. I can only hope it helped you learn a valuable lesson. Hey, I tried! You are the only one who can deal with her. And if you don't... Well, she's let you know what will happen, hasn't she? Then you shouldn't have trusted us with her destruction. She is inevitable. Can't you feel it? He's being melodramatic, but he's not exactly wrong, is he? What are we supposed to do to stop her? <sighs> okay, first things first, you're going to have to stuff those pessimistic thoughts someplace far, far away and commit yourself to what needs to be done. See if I could try to kill her at least. The stakes of the situation should be perfectly clear to everyone. Oh, I now. don't think it's gonna if happen. You're going to save the she world, you definitely have to have has a lot of power off. now. You can't win a battle that you've already lost in your mind. I'm not going to help you end the world. I don't care if something new comes after. I just can't let you do that. I see. Perhaps you need another lesson in submitting to your betters. Pick up that needle. Do it. It's what she wants. No objections here. I don't know what she's planning, and I don't like that we don't know what she's planning, but we might as well pick up the blade. As your eye falls on the blade, you feel a weight. Some divine hand that sits unperceived by your senses, but that manages to push you towards its desires like an unseen puppeteer. <laughs> this is so good. I can't pick anything else. You reach forward and grasp the blade. I literally could not pick anything else. Stand. This one's easy. See? 
This isn't so bad. Okay, yeah. We can do that. We were probably going to stand anyway. Yeah, no, I can't. I cannot pick anything. It's... You can feel a creaking tension between body and will as you slowly rise to your feet, like two foes forced into an unhappy truce. She has the power now. The princess eyes you with soft contemplation. The moment seems to last a lifetime, the silent anticipation of what's to come dragging out the long, painful seconds. But all also, silence this music is is fucking eventually. awesome. I love it. To defy me is to claim we stand on level ground. We do not. You are quiet, Shadow. While I am brilliant radiance. Take that knife in your hand and slit your throat. <laughs> what? You don't have to listen to her. You're armed. Just steal your nerves, step forward, and end this. It's gonna make me kill myself, isn't oh, it? Oh, we'll end this all right. Your hand lifts the blade and brings it towards your throat. Okay, I apologize for the unclear language. End her. Gotta try! Your body is sluggish and unresponsive, actively fighting against you, but you do your best to stagger forward. One step at a time, you move towards the princess. Slitting your throat would have been a mercy, but it seems you're in need of a harsher lesson. Plunge that knife into your lungs. I'm sorry. Don't! As you take another step forward, the blade digs into your ribs, slicing through flesh with ease. Ugh. It somehow feels like an entirely natural thing to do, while the simple act of walking has become an arduous impossibility. Then it slides back out, the wound burning as a small hiss of air escapes through the fresh orifice. Blood fills your lungs. Now, do it again. Keep doing it until I give you permission to stop. Those are just words. You don't have to listen to her. It's what she wants. You, heroic one, what are you doing? Don't just let this happen. Stop him from killing you. I'm on it. Your other hand locks around your wrist, struggling to keep it from perforating vital organs. But the blade still flails towards you, managing to slice bits of skin that plop to the floor to join the growing pile of blood and gore beneath you. Despite the pain, you manage to keep yourself in one piece. Damn. At least for now. What a pitiful display. A wounded little bird thinking it can defy a god. It doesn't have to be like this. It doesn't have to hurt so much. You can choose a gentle end. You can choose to leave that punctured vessel for the next. Keep going! Boy. You can pathetically struggle against yourself until the floor of this temple is painted with the bloody impressions of your futility. You continue to approach the princess, even as the repeated gouges of your blade expose bone and muscle to the open air of the basement. Ah! You know, this would be a lot easier the description. if you gave us a hand. This descriptions, ah, oh, they always get their, ah, oh, the I sounds, the description. So far, I can only juggle so many things at once. The best I can do right now is to continue to drive you forward. Believe me, this whole ordeal would be so much easier if I didn't have to contend with free will. You're the one making things difficult. You're the one making us hurt. She doesn't want to hurt us. She's just doing what she has to. Stop. As you finish crossing the room, you fall to your knees at the princess's feet, your chest heaving as your blood pools in the crevices of the stone floor, the coppery taste coating your throat. The princess kneels down, lifting your chin with her finger as her face lowers to yours. Your devotion is misplaced. You've surrendered to delusion. 
But something about your defiant spirit speaks to me. You are different than you were before. God, when a game makes you speechless like this, it's just, this is amazing. This is amazing. Perhaps, if you've learned your lesson, I can spare you from the release of death. There is a place at my side for you, if you'll have it. Not as an equal, but as something worthy to be kept. A priest, perhaps. Or a pet. This is just du du This is supposed to be like dummy mommy moments right here. That's what I'm getting from this. Well, that's demeaning, isn't it? Yes, how thoughtful of her. It's a mercy. Take it. I think he's given up whatever say he had at the start of all this. At least one of you is sane. She's within striking distance and she's only negotiating now because she knows you have what it takes to put an end to her. Seize the moment before it's too late. Should I try? You know what? I'm gonna try. Though your body trembles, struggling to defend itself in the face of the princess's overwhelming will, you finally manage to break through, darting to her side before she can react. The wind of your freedom rushes through you, and you channel it into a decisive blow, stabbing into the soft flesh of her ankle and severing the tendons in an act of unyielding defiance. Oh. She falls to the floor, crashing unceremoniously to her knees. You don't give her any time to recover. Your heart pounding with determination, you plunge your blade into her chest. As you find your target again and again, she laughs, crude emotion breaking through her once stony composure as your blade cuts her flesh. We can do this, can't we? You always could. The decision to give you this task was not made lightly. You're here for a reason. It's not too late to pick up the pieces. It's not too late to toss that blade aside and beg for forgiveness. No, no! Sh yeah, shut up, you! I can't believe you would actually strike me. You, you heathen! Before Oops. you can strike the final blow, the princess lashes out. I didn't mean to skip that. Can I go back? What did she say? Uh, you heathen, you worm, you defiler. You don't know the consequences of your arrogance. Okay, okay. That's what she said. There's an unsettling wet pop as your spine breaks, numbness and pain spreading through your body. As you rebound towards the ceiling in a moment of disorientated lightness, she drives her fist into your chest. Your body is crushed as she pulverizes you into the floor, the ground itself breaking from the impact. Damn, it's basically like I'm fighting a god. You lie there, broken, beyond pain, Unable to even see what she's done to you. But the princess is succumbing to her own wounds as well. She looks down upon her body in abject horror and disgust. You made me use my hands. I I can feel myself twisting into something new. Something dull, something defiled. What have you done to me? Your monsters and conspirators. I can't bear to watch this. The princess has been nothing but cruel to you. You should feel liberated by her fall. But I don't feel liberated. I feel empty. Aside from the pain, I feel fine. <laughs> she collapsed. God the killer, slay your better. Oh, I love that. Still full of anguish and fear as the two of you perish together. I suppose we were never going to get a happy ending here, were we? Don't let those be your final thoughts. You saved the world. That's worth something. I guess. Regardless of how you feel about it, it's finally over. Thank you. Everything goes dark, and you die. Chapter 3, The Fury? Okay, we're still go- Oh, no. On a path in the woods. And at the end of the path- Okay, what the hell is that? I think he's upset. <laughs> no shit! And what's he got to be upset about? We just killed a god! Yeah, we did! Hell yeah, we just killed a god! Exactly. You 
heathens destroyed the most beautiful thing. Oh, shut the fuck up, you submissive sim. You're damn right we did. You'll get over it. But what the hell happened to everything? Why is everything all fleshy? I can't say I have much sympathy for you. She was bad for us, and you almost got us killed. You're being too generous. He did get us killed. All right, enough chatter. I've got a thing I'm supposed to do, and if you don't mind, I'd like to do it without any more interruptions. Okay, great, you're listening. <clears throat> you're on a path in the woods. This the isn't no woods, buddy. Is it? If your thing is telling us about the princess, don't waste your breath. We know all about her, and it's hardly a path in the woods at this point, is it? Yeah. Well, this is just a bit. Literally looks like hell now. Clearly you've already been here. Yeah. God, this soundtrack is so good! From the ungodly music to now where it's like all hellish and dark. That's fucking genius. Actually, I don't think we have been here. This is all different. Is it? Yes, precisely. I might have to buy the soundtrack that comes with this game. Would have said that. Oh, you're actually letting me talk now. Great. If you've already been here, it means you've seen things you aren't supposed to have seen, and you know things that you aren't supposed to know. This doesn't look like a park in the woods if reality <laughs> seems distorted. It's because reality is distorted. So you knew this could this looks like something you from the Mind Flayers in Baldur's Gate, not gonna lie. Look, if the world around you is changing, especially all the way out here, then that means you're nearing the point of no return. Whatever happens next, that's it. There won't be any more do-overs. So you'd better take things seriously. No matter what happens next, it seems like our answers are at the cabin. Might as well see this through. It's good. We're all on the same page. It isn't long before you find yourself at the end of the path, staring up at the cabin on the hill. You'll find the princess within, as I'm sure you already know. I'm pretty sure this is... That's it? No final words? I'm pretty sure this is... she's gonna be like some kind of like, um mind flayer thing or a demon of some kind i don't know not waste any more time i'm sure that any advice i'd give at this point is something you've already heard if there's still a princess at the cabin but maybe we can salvage things maybe if we just grovel and apologize things can go back to how they were before oh cut it out will you we need to be tough right now and you're making it so much harder than it has to be so stop whining here we go the interior of the cabin is a place that feels long forgotten. There was once an elegance to its construction, carved marble columns holding a high arched roof, vaulted windows letting in the weak starlight. But that is how it was. Now there is a growth that has overtaken it. A viscous fluid seeps from cracks in the stone walls, and it congeals into chaotic streaks of writhing nerves and wet clumps of living. So yeah, mind flayer shit. That's horrible. You did this. The only furniture of note is a pulsating pedestal. A pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You take the blade from blade. the pedestal. It will be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Good. Nothing feels better than gripping cold steel. Approach the mirror. You step forward and approach the door to the basement, hesitating before you open it. Yeah, we've seen this Almost before in um, in one of the. All we see is a damn mirror. Yeah, we've se we've seen this Grimey. before. Why don't we wipe it clean? Wipe what clean? The door? The mirror? What are you talking about? You're standing in front of the door. What? But it has to be real. It's smash it, smash it to pieces. It's the. Do you want to know what we'll see in there? Nah, I'm with it. This one. Do whatever you want with it. The mirror isn't real. So, again, you bring your fist crashing down against the door leading to the basement. Okay. 
Let's just go. Come on. It slowly slides open, scraping against the stone floor, its ancient hinges moaning as it reveals the dim path ahead. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Yeah, we've seen this like three other times already, buddy. Let's go. Step forward into the darkness. I'm actually Stairs hyped to see this one. I'm getting hyped up with this music. And grandiose. The high vaulted ceiling stretches up into a gloom beyond your sight, while walls wet with tumorous growths press in uncomfortably at your sides. You feel both unprotected and trapped, at once exposed and claustrophobic. The air is thick, its odor an oppressive violence. The metallic scent of fresh blood twisting with the nauseating embers of charred remains. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her voice. A bellowing rage roars up the stairs. Oh, here we go. Was severing the tendons of my ascension not enough for you? Was it not enough to rend my divine heart? Come, see the horrors you've wrought upon my flesh, and feel my hands set upon your throat. She's so angry with this. Why? Why did you desecrate her? Why couldn't I stop you? Got to stop this is thinking some about doom like shit that. happening Isn't now. Anyone any good? She's not some untouchable god. She's an abomination. We're going to put call an me end the to Doom Slayer, bitch. <laughs> if she is an abomination, then what does that make us? She was going to end the world last time. If I might interject, you didn't make her into an abomination. She's always been what she is. It's why you're here. And it's why your task is so important. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. The chamber's walls are painted in blood. Woo! The sickening red that drips down in clotted streams onto the charred corpses that make up its floor. This place reeks of torment, of ripped skin and burning bones. The princess stands in its center, muscles flayed and bare and weeping, draped in a tattered dress of her own skin. Her heart beats from its place in her open chest. Do you know what I'm going to do to you? There's not so much a moment of hesitation before she steps forward. Her chains pull taut, holding fast as she strains against them. The cuff around her wrist digs deeper into her skin. Blood drips from the place where metal meets flesh. And then, with a nauseating sound, the skin tears. It plops to the ground. She pulls her red, glistening arm free from her bindings. She is loose, and she is coming for you. Oh boy. It's the punishment you all deserve for Let's do this! I'm hyped! It's the punishment I deserve. Shut the fuck up, broken voice! I'm not listening to you and your submissive ass! Screw that. We can win. Yeah! I'm with this guy. I'm with this guy this time. We got this. Let's win it! She's practically done most of the work for us. Yeah, I'm going to end you! You'll try. And that's what I've been so excited for. Yes, 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 yes! Battle to the Your death! Heart free of fear, you charge towards the princess. Your eyes locked on each other. Both of you prepared to lay down your very essence there's in nail. one yes. blow. It's now or never. Let's make it a beautiful blaze of glory. Yeah! With a horrifying squelch, you are unwound. What? I hope you weren't planning on dying. We're going to make this last forever. Huh. I feel cold. I've never felt cold before. Wait, what the fuck? Did I just explode? Is that what happened? True to her word, you do not die by her hand, nor will you ever. Memory. Alright, it's She's this cold. again. Where does she go? Oh, there's that mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Show me what I am now. Bro, this mirror. This doesn't. Screw the mirror. We just. I don't want to look at us. Shut up. Voices feel small, distant as you approach. Easy for your reflection. 
Star wants to reach forward. Gone once again. Mirror always makes them leave. You need to see what's in it. The remains you've unraveled. You find yourself in the long quiet. All right, here we go. Next, next vessel, I guess. There's a world beyond the endless walls of the long quiet. I'm curious to see what it means for us to know it. You have thoughts on this vessel? This one is desecration. She placed the weight of her agony on you, yet it is she who unwound herself. But there is passion and empathy in her misery. She will make for a burning heart. Do not mourn her. She has finally found peace. Uh, do you think there are people out there? It doesn't matter if there are. People are too small for us. You and I are the only things that interest me. This has got to be some kind of god-level bullshit that we're spewing around with this. Like, I think that's, again, that's what I'm drawing a conclusion to. The two of us are some kind of godlike creatures who are going through different, like, perspectives and timelines and shit. And we are, like, slowly putting ourselves back together the more we try to kill each other. I don't know. That's what I'm assuming. Do you think anything... Ugh. I'm also a little sick to my stomach because the, the visuals get me sometimes. Do you think that anything is real out there? Do you think that we're real? We are real. Nothing is an idea that dwells in the absence of something. But nothing cannot exist on its own. And because of that, nothing can't exist. Damn. When you send me back, I'm not alone. There are voices that speak to me. Some of them are me, but one of them is something else. I call him the narrator, and he wants me to kill you. Do you have a narrator? Have the vessels had one? No. Their minds are empty, existent, but constantly shifting into something new. Do you think your narrator lives in the spaces beyond? He does, and when I find him, I'm going to kill him. If he is anything other than us, he isn't worth the effort to destroy. Do you know what's going to happen when you awaken? If I did, I would already be awake. That's a fair, fair answer. <laughs> uh, everything you say feels like a riddle. Can you give me a single straight answer? I'm sorry. Words are... difficult for me. They never fully weave what I wish to say. If you do not like my answers, then you need not ask me questions. Sorry, I the asked. The vessels you choose to bring me carry far more meaning than anything words could say in the spaces between. How many more vessels do I need to bring you? One. Whatever you bring me next will be enough, and then gravity will pull the others back to me. I will be singular, a final multitude. If this is the last time, is there anything you would like me to bring you? These gifts are a conversation. And each one shows me the contours of your heart. The only thing I want to see is what you choose for me when the thread is fully drawn. I'm ready to go back. The next time I see you, each of us will finally know what we are. I will be here, waiting for you. Everything goes dark and you die! Alright, another one in the bag! Let's go. Uh, unwound Vessel, bring the fury to her. Shut the fuck up, son of a bitch. Alright. 
save it there. Well, that was another episode of Slay the Princess. We brought the Fury and earned the title of God Killer. Hell yeah. That's a very satisfying episode for me. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this episode and want to see more content here at Alvarez Gaming Films, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content here at Alvarez Gaming Films. And I will see you in the next video. Peace out, guys!